Let's get straight into the details on North Korea's missile launch. This latest missile flew over Japan and landed out in the Pacific Ocean and appears to be Pyongyang's response to the UN Security Council sanctions approved earlier this week. Let's hear more from our Defence Ministry correspondent Kim Hyun Bin, who joins us on the line. Hyun Bin. Uh, good morning, Mark. Uh, North Korea launched what we know now was an intermediate ballistic missile early Friday morning from an area near Pyongyang. Now, South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says the IRBM was fired at 6.57 a.m. Uh, South Korea time from Sunan near the North Korean capital. And it flew over northern Japan and came down in the North Pacific. Now, South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says the missile hit an altitude of 770 kilometers and flew around 3,700 kilometers. Now, so in Washington are currently analyzing the launch to confirm what type of missile it was, uh, but many experts say the missile was most likely a Hwasong-12 IRBM. Now, late last, uh, last month, North Korea fired a Hwasong-12 over Japan, which traveled 2,700 kilometers and reached a maximum altitude of about 550 kilometers. Now, today's launch followed a similar path, but flew 1,000 kilometers further than the previous launch 17 days ago. Now in response, the South Korean military has conducted its own ballistic missile training exercise in the East Sea. Now, the military fired a Hyunmu-2, which has a range of 250 kilometers. And the Joint Chiefs of Staff says the missile was fired considering the distance between the training ground and the Sunan airfield, uh, the origin of this morning's provocation. And North Korea's latest launch also comes four days after the U.S. Security Council slapped stronger sanctions on the regime for its sixth nuclear test uh, conducted earlier this month. Japan deployed Patriot missile launches in central Tokyo on Tuesday, a move officials said was aimed at providing ballistic missile defense in the event of a possible North Korean missile launch. In the dead of night, military personnel rolled out two Patriot Advanced Capability 3, or PAC-3, interceptors at the Japanese Defense Ministry's headquarters in Ichigawa, central Tokyo, while others were deployed to Osaka and Narashino on the outskirts of the capital. Footage filmed by Japanese broadcaster TV Tokyo also appeared to show two launches readied near a U.S. military base in Yokosuka. As part of our efforts to protect the lives and safety of the Japanese people, we can confirm that units equipped with Pac-3 missile launches have been deployed around Tokyo to Ichigawa, Narashino and Asaka. Meantime, other developments. American troops are also taking part in Sweden's biggest military drills in more than 20 years. They're called Aurora 17, and they're taking place on an island in the Baltic Sea. Here's Miguel Francis Santiago on why the neutral nation thinks it needs such a large-scale exercise like that right now. There is a video out there on Sweden, that peaceful, beautiful land full of green fields, good food, and very generous social programs. But actually, this video turns into something hard and heavy right away. Turns out it's promoting the largest military exercise of the past two decades. Vi är beredda att göra det som krävs även i de svåraste av situationer. På ytter ska vi kunna möta ett väpnat angrepp mot Sverige. And not just any exercise, but one designed to deal with, I quote, a larger, sophisticated opponent, the one that will approach from the east. 19,000 participants, just from Sweden alone, as well as military forces from eight other countries have joined these drills called Aurora 17. And you guessed it, the United States is also there. The United States with our allies and partners are doing this. This is normal business for us. That's going to be our posture, normal business. Uh, we train all the time. Uh, we work, uh, soldiers work always to be at the highest level of, of preparation, not alert, but being prepared. That's, a, that's our job. That's what you would expect us to be ready, just like you expect the fire department to be ready, the hospital to be ready. <laughs>
where could it go on a serious level? A Swedish peace activist we spoke to does believe the country risks becoming dangerously militarized because of its ties with NATO. People are upset with the Aurora military drill because it's uh, one more step towards uh, a militarization of our foreign politics and with uh, adding one extra very dangerous component, which is NATO. There's no scale that is necessary according to me. There's, uh, if it would be 20,000 or 10,000, it's not really the question. I would say that military exercises do not make, so, make, us, make us safer. Uh, I think that we are going in uh, the wrong direction. NATO member Turkey has signed an estimated billion dollar deal to buy Russia's advanced S-400 missile system. The S-400 missile system deal has already been signed by officials. As far as I know, the first installment was also transferred. This process will continue between Turkey and Russia. Well, the delivery of this particular system, it's a Russian S-400 system, which is surface-to-air missiles. And what we're looking at here is the first installment, the first payment on a deal that we estimate is worth around 2.5 billion US dollars. And Russia's new system is the next generation air defense system. And we're looking at a range of targets, aerial targets, ranging from aircraft and also non-manned aircraft, drones, and also varying types of missiles. And to take those targets down, we're looking at a system that deploys three different types of missiles. This new system is apparently twice as good as the old one. So let's look at further at some of the capabilities of this particular system. It can engage up to 80 targets all at the same time. It has a maximum target range of 400 kilometers and a maximum target speed of 4.8 kilometers per second. So powerful stuff. We're looking in terms of those who bought it, as we say, we're talking about the Turkey deal. China have already requested it. And also it looks like India are, they're, they're interested in this particular deal as well and it's also been deployed in Syria so that, that's the particular deal that's what the, the system can do but also what are the wider implications well as we know Turkey is a member of NATO it has the second largest army amongst the allies there and Washington has already voiced some concerns there have been some some worrying murmurs from the Pentagon about this deal going forward which have now of course it's gone through and in the meantime there have been a decline in relations between Ankara and Washington whereas at the same time we've seen an improvement between Ankara and Moscow. Also at the same time when Pres President Erdogan announced this particular